so we have just learned that uh, the angular velocity of a rigid body when executing motion in three dimensions is given by this formula so the angular velocity is a vector with a magnitude phi dot of t and momentarily its axis of rotation is given by n of t and the big question for us then was how do i compute phi dot and n well let's just kind of recap the way we did it so far was we computed the rate of change of the unit vectors which define the body fixed coordinate system so i had a rigid body my typical rigid body looks like that for to which i had attached a body fixed coordinate system which i shall do so like this and they were and at time t it was diff the unit vectors are e1 e2 and e3 at time t i called this coordinate system e of t this was at time t and at a and this body fixed coordinate system was time varying that is why i have t is here uh, i will uh, ask you to recall the fact that we had changed our notation slightly instead of identifying every new rotation of the body fixed coordinate system by primes double primes triple primes we simply made them functions of time that saved us a lot of labor in notation so we have this time varying bfcs and we considered its orientation at two times time t and a subsequent time t plus delta t so let's kind of draw that so here is my bfcs i'm just trying to copy over there and i place it here and i rotate it okay that's my rotated a little bit larger in shape okay so that's my uh, bfcs at time t plus delta t and uh, it is defined by the unit vectors are now t plus delta t e2 t plus delta t e3 t plus delta t and the bfcs is now called et plus delta t okay and so what we did was we computed ei dot of t right and how did we compute ei dot of t well what we did was we wrote down the typical formula for a derivative that this is equal to limit delta t tends to 0 e i at t plus delta t minus e i at t over delta t and then after some uh, manipulations we were able to relate it to the rotation tensor which connects these two uh, orientations of the body fix coordinate system and we had called this tensor r of t this varies with time because i am considering a, any particular time to uh, evaluate ei dot of t okay and then you can go back and look at how we changed this formula to look like that formula okay now we are going to understand this quantity a little bit differently in order to compute phi dot and n so here i have drawn uh, the rigid body at times t and t plus delta t and uh, this is the r which links the bfcs at t and t plus delta t now typically what happens uh, let's kind of understand how you know things are happening in real life typically there is an observer okay and uh, the observer has his own coordinate frame so for example the observer could be sitting on earth and this could be his coordinate frame okay so we call it the observer frame and uh, let it be defined by uh, e1 capital e1 capital e2 and capital e3 the observer could himself be uh, rotating or not it doesn't really matter okay as you will see and let it origin be and let this frame be e0 okay what we know immediately is that because all of these are 
coordinate frames uh, all of these are cartesian coordinate systems so therefore there exists a rotation tensor relating e0 and et right so that's what i have uh, kind of written over here is that there is a rotation there is a rotation tensor relate r0 relating e0 and e of t so i am calling this connection as r0 of t and similarly this one will be given by the connection r0 but now evaluated at t plus delta t okay so that's what i have written over there that r0 of t takes e0 to e of t while r0 of t plus delta t takes e0 to e of t plus delta t okay now what does this tell me so what it tells me is that i can write down equations relating the unit vectors of the bfcs at time t to the unit vectors of the observer frame that's the observer frame through r0 and r0 by the axis angle formula will again have can be expressed in terms of a rotation phi 0 about some axis n 0 let's recall the axis angle formula so r0 at time t right will be given by some rotation phi 0 about some axis n 0 by a formula of the kind 1 plus sin phi 0 of t capital n 0 of t plus 1 minus cosine phi 0 of t into n 0 square of t right so that was the axis angle formula for r 0 similarly the same r 0 but evaluated now at t plus delta t will relate the unit vectors of the observer frame to the unit vectors of the body fixed coordinate system the bfcs at t plus delta t so that's the setup now okay so here is a little zoomed out view the setup okay so what do we get from here using this we will try and express this quantity in terms of r0 why am i trying to do that let's recall we are doing that because we believe get getting hold of r the rotation tensor which links the bfcs at time t to the bfcs at time t plus delta t is much harder than getting the bfcs r0 because usually there is an observer following the motion of the rigid body and when he is following the motion of the rigid body he is keeping track of this rotation tensor so usually we have r0 with us okay so if we if we know r0 can we get r that's the question we are going to answer now so how should we proceed our aim is to express this quantity that's the only place where r comes in in terms of r0 so the, what we will do is that we will use this figure okay in this figure we have frame e0 et and et plus delta t and what you see is this flow chart which i shall write down again so what we have is that e0 is taken to e of t by r0 at t which is taken to e t plus delta t by r at t but at the same time these two are linked directly by r0 t plus delta t right so we have a kind of a cyclic connection between them which we can express by saying that r0 t plus delta t should be equal to r0 of t is r of t dot r0 of t okay i will let you think over this and uh, ensure that you understand now what i am going to do is that uh, i know uh, uh, i can bring this over here by taking the not over there i can bring this over here by taking the inverse the inverse of a rotation tensor is simply the transpose so i can get a formula for r of t r of t is r0 t plus delta t 
dot r0 transpose of t okay so far so good this would be great except that the presence of t plus delta t while everywhere else i have t is troublesome i can help that by noticing that delta t is going to be taken to be small okay so and when delta t is small i can always use taylor's theorem right to express r0 t plus delta t is r0 of t plus r0 dot of t into delta t plus terms which are order delta t square okay so that's great now what i can do with that is that i can take this and substitute in there when i do that i will get r of t is can cut down some time by simply copying this putting it there and post multiplying it by r0 transpose there is a time here which you can keep okay now when i multiply you can easily see that these two will give me identity so this will give me identity plus r0 dot r0 transpose all at time t into delta t plus terms which are ordered delta t square okay what do i have over here ei dot okay so we have ei dot of time is limit delta t tends to 0 r of t minus the identity tensor over delta t and this whole thing is multiplying e i of t right well i am nearly home r of t minus 1 here is r of t minus 1 okay so i can take 1 on to this side and i get r of t minus 1 is equal to this quantity right so i can write down that e i dot t is limit delta t tends to 0 1 by delta t into r 0 dot r 0 transpose at time t delta t plus order delta t square okay and the whole thing dotted with e i t right that's what i have i have simply substituted from here here okay then what i will get is that i can cancel off this delta t with that delta t this delta t square becomes order delta t when i take delta t tends to 0 this term will go to 0 so that the final expression will be e i dot t is r 0 dot r 0 at t dot e i at t right so there i have it i have now produced for you a formula okay which is that's not very that was not smart that's my formula and this is another way of writing this equation over here except e i dot t now is in terms of r 0 which we believe we have more access to okay let's talk now a little bit more about r 0 dot r 0 and how it can relate to the angular velocity that we have defined over there and i have got uh, this quantity and i am going to call that quantity as omega t okay so and this omega t is what i am going to call the angular velocity tensor okay what does that mean well here i have written something i am showing that this angular velocity tensor is actually a skew symmetric tensor and that i can easily prove so here is my 
angular velocity tensor omega t to be defined as r 0 dot dot r 0 I think I missed a transpose here that's the transpose okay and uh, well what is omega transpose that is r 0 dot r 0 dot transpose now we know that r 0 dot r 0 dot is identity right so if you differentiate differentiate right this is a function of time right we differentiate we will get r 0 dot r 0 transpose plus r 0 dot r 0 dot transpose is equal to 0 because identity is a constant so this will imply that r 0 dot r 0 dot transpose is minus r 0 dot r 0 transpose right so therefore omega transpose is equal to minus r 0 dot r 0 transpose because this is the same as that but this is omega so therefore omega is skew symmetric what do we know about skew symmetric tensors what we know is that there is an axial vector right associated with omega right and we call this axial vector small omega is axial of capital omega that's what I have and this small omega is what is being defined as the angular velocity the question for you is is this definition and that definition which we obtained earlier are they the same well they have to be because we have used the same procedure of computing the rate of change of ei dot so here is ei dot which consists of r0 dot r transpose from this we computed omega and from omega we computed small omega so basically what do we have over here so we have said that ei dot is r0 <coughs> dot r0 transpose dot ei which is the same as omega dot ei because that is this by definition now we have also said that omega is skew symmetric that means that this operation is the same as the cross product of the axial vector with ei so we have got this equation all over again but this is precisely the equation that we had when we derived when we defined omega to be phi dot n so therefore this omega is the same as this omega defined previously okay from that leads to that's what i just said so therefore we have shown that this angular velocity vector is the same as the one defined previously which was in terms of phi dot n t and here is the answer that we have to the question we had asked how do we compute phi dot n n that's simple you can get phi dot n n by constructing the axial vector of the tensor r0 dot dot r0 transpose r0 is something that you keep track of because you are an observer who is looking at a rigid body thus we now have a way of following a rigid body and computing its angular velocity tensor okay